All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, in today's episode or whatever, we finally ordered this. Just came in today. We have the Holly Cypher, excuse me, Holly Cypher Hyper Spark Distributor. Uh, so we're gonna be installing this in the car throughout this video. I doubt I'll get it all done today, but um, I got part number for 302-565-341. I did not do, um, there's multiple options you could do for this car. I chose this one. I don't really think that, I don't really believe in the HyperSpark box or the HyperSpark coil. I believe that's all just a gimmick from Holly. They put their brand on something and then they're trying to sell you on it. So to save yourself 800 bucks or whatever all that stuff costs, you can do it this way. So this is just gonna use the stock Fox body coil. I believe I have an Excel aftermarket coil in here now. It'll work on any of those. It'll also work on the old school cylinder coils. And then this should be plug and play right to the sniper. And I believe there's one wire we have to wire up and then one ground besides the plugs. So let's get the box open, check it out. And um, I'll show you guys how to install it and how we get it all programmed up. <clears throat> all right, so I opened this earlier. Um, here's what it comes with. We have our uh, Holly's plastic cap here. This is for um, phasing your rotor, I believe, or getting the timing all set up in the thing. We have our actual distributor. Now again, this is the HyperSpark 565-341, so it's the one plug. Normal uh, small block four distributor. And then there's that. It comes with the MSD style distributor cap. Obviously, Holly owns MSD. So there's that for you. It comes with um, gear break in oil, or you could soak this in normal oil, depending on what stage your motor is. Uh, this is already in the car, and I'll be running this shortly, so I'll just probably use normal oil. Normal oil. If this was sitting on an engine stand, I'd probably end up using this. And then. Lastly, we have our wiring harness. So everything you just saw me made in the previous video will, uh, won't matter anymore because we'll be using this for timing control. So like I said, the plugs right into the distributor on this end. This will go to your sniper. Um, this goes, like I said, right to the forward coil spot. And then it also comes with ring terminals where you can cut this off and then wire up the ring terminals to go to an old cylinder style coil. And then there's just a couple wires here. One's a ground. And then I guess there's two wires we have to wire up. Besides that, it has a whole pamphlet, uh, which is nice. And it'll show you wiring diagrams based off your style, which you're going for. So here's uh, what we're gonna do right here. The wire to it. I'm not using the HyperSpark coil. It'll go into any coil. I'm just trying to sell you on that. And then there's the HyperSpark ignition box and all that. Um, if I chose to go with HyperSpark, excuse me, HyperSpark ignition box, there's a whole other kit that comes with it and you can buy it all in a bundle and I probably would have chose that. Um, I don't care to use that, so this should do just fine. And then of course the connectors. Okay, so in a previous video, we wired this up because I eliminated the stock body harness. And then I made my own harness for the distributor, as you can see here, this is a ready to run distributor. Contacted Holly and I could get no answer from them if this would work for timing control. So I just ended up bite, uh, biting the bullet and then ended up buying their distributor. Um, this is our stock Excel coil. So we'll be undoing this plug and then I'll be taking out this whole harness. I did use, make this custom harness here, which is our key on and crank on um, power. And this will go right into the Holly harness. So we'll cut this wire and then we'll now connect it to the Holly harness. And yeah, so I'm just gonna remove this and then I'll keep you guys updated. With this new setup and this distributor, our yellow wire will no longer be being used. So I'm just gonna clip this and then I'll ravel it up and tuck it back there or I could de-pin it from the connector at a later date. Um, but I'm just gonna leave it as long as possible in case this sniper ever ends up in another car or I decide to change systems on this, whatever it may be. Uh, I always like to leave things so that they could be changed or whatever, or applied in, I don't know how to word that. Anyways, let's keep going. 
Okay, so this is the old harness, which I just made in the previous video, as I stated prior. Um, and we're going to completely eliminate this from the car. And now we'll be using a Harley Sniper harness that came with our distributor. Um, so, I mean, starters. I'm going to stab the distributor in later. Um, I just figured I'd get it wired up first and get a nice clean wiring set up. Because all the distributor needs to do is plug into this. And then since this motor has already been running... Um, I believe it's set at 10 degrees timing right now and the uh, computer's programmed 10 degrees so they match. I'm going to turn this to cylinder one, take off the cap, turn this to cylinder one, and then pull out the first spark plug and then when it blows out on my finger I'll know it's not 180 out but that's the best way I'll find top dead center. Or you could always just pull the trigger out, uh, put a screwdriver or something and watch the piston and the screwdriver pop out as the piston rises. Um, or the best way to do it is to get a top dead center tool where it's either a whistle or a gauge or whatever and uh, it'll let you know anyways let's get this installed um, that's just my two cents on this I'm used to setting up my car harness going up the front of the motor um, and I've essentially like all my wires to go out one way but the way the length of the wires is white will go to the white wire coming out of the sniper harness already pink is your key on switch ignition bolt so mine's right here currently and then black is your ground and the, they don't give you much length for ground although i guess the longer the wire the more it'll uh have a lower resistance over time anyways so to do this we're just going to run this side of the harness up the side of the motor the nice coil part and then the rest we're just going to tuck around on the top of the intake valley um, and then I will find a ground somewhere up there to go to and then as for my ignition harness we're going to run it back with the rest of it to make it nice and clean so that's I, don't know, I figured I'd include that just to let you guys know if you're doing this setup all right guys I had to take the old holly box off the shelf here um the white points output wire is in the 10 pin harness right here which I have no use for at the current time being um so yeah kind of sucks that there's so i could deep in it um but i really don't want to because there are some things right now i have my fan on a fan controller fans on a fan controller and then i also have ac um so i'd like to get the compressor on a relay and all that set up eventually and like to get my fans and fan controller set up on a relay eventually it's not a first priority right now because it don't really need the AC, live without it with T-tops and windows. And then the fan controller fan, excuse me, the fans on the fan controller have been working fine for years. So there's no reason to change it at this moment. Eventually it'd be nice to get it all set up on the Holly and have it do everything. And then I guess this connector is also, um, if you did a Holly dash. Um, and at some point I'd love to put the seven and a half inch or 10 in, 10 and a half inch, whatever it is dash in this car it, although it's like a it costs almost as much as the unit um, so that's on the waiting list but anyways i guess uh we'll uh get this i don't know i think i'm gonna put this sh the sheath on it and then just coil it in the back of the motor and have the white one sticking out for now that's just my plan you guys do whatever you want this is how i'm doing it i've uh i'm trying to wire tuck this not wire tuck it but make it as neat as possible um and doing so i laid out my wire route routes whatever now i pulled it all back out i already wired this connection and like i said um i do love using these things but i always just do a little bit of electric tape over them as a precautionary measure um for insulation purposes in case you melt through it with a lighter because you're supposed to use a heat gun which unfortunately i don't have one anyways long story short I laid it out in the car, I pulled it back out, now I'm going to wire it all together, and then I have some Tessa tape, so I'm going to go and I'm going to make this all nice and clean, or cleaner than it is, um, so I just, uh, I'll run a time lapse now, and uh, show you guys the process.
we have the harness all plugged in. This is my mess back here of extra wires, but I'm not a fan of this because I ran it under the driver's side and it goes under the throttle cable. So once it's all, um, once I stab the distributor in, um, I'm gonna go and zip tie all this stuff. Yeah, I'm not really the biggest fan of why Holly put all the stuff coming out the front. I think it would have been ideal if they put all the uh, plugs and sensors coming out the back. Because it doesn't make sense why it has to lay over the side of your motor. So I had everything on the passenger side, and then I just switched a harness or two to this side. Um, so anyways, long story short, we have our plug down here, ready to go. I come down here to our coil, this, and then my oil pressure harness will get zip tied to the supercharger oil harness just to keep it nice and clean. And then that way nothing touches the header and then melts, um, so to keep everything in place. Then we have our plug right here, which is, I don't know what you call it. Um, I think it's the magnetic sensor plug or something. And then following it back, our white plug goes into this harness over here. Actually, no, I'm sorry, it goes into this harness down here. And then our pink wire comes all the way back here to the coil plug, and that's everything. So the harness is all set up. I did this part first, um, just because it doesn't make sense to me to put a distributor in and then not have it wired up. All the directions are the other way, put your distributor in first and then wire it up. But to me, it just makes sense to have the wires going, then I can stab it in and do everything at once. So I'm gonna call it quits for tonight. So I'm just gonna leave the distributor in here. And then like I said, uh, probably be picking right up after this clip we're going to take this cap off turn the motor over to cylinder one and have the rotor point to cylinder one make sure we feel it's on the compression stroke um and then we will put this sucker in there so here it is in all its glory um we do have an o-ring to put on it first and then there's step-by-step -step instructions in this manual which everybody gets when you purchase one. I just figured it'd be easy to see it on video. And then Holly's videos, um, most of the time they do it, the motor's on an engine stand, and that's why like, oh, you can install this harness in 15 minutes. Yeah, because they just have their wires dangling everywhere. But if you wanna do it, this is I wouldn't say this is clean, but it's tucked and everything's routed where it should go. Um, it's gonna take a little bit more time than that. So yeah, anyways, uh, following this clip, you will see me put the distributor in. All right, guys, we're finishing up this Holly distributor uh, install, CypressPark. Uh, I had a little issue with Summit Racing, um, but they fixed it. Long story short, the distributor I had purchased had a cast iron gear. It said steel gear was included. It wasn't, so I had them swap me out. This is the same part number. It just ends with an S if you're going to purchase it. Um, and then you can see right here, it's stamped, not stamped, but engraved or whatever, laser etched with an S for the steel gear. Uh, steel gear will work for aftermarket camshaft. Um, it's better than a bronze gear because over time you have to replace the bronze because it's softer metal. Um, and then cast iron would be for uh, flat tap it. Uh, this is a roller camshaft. It's an aftermarket camshaft, so we definitely need steel gear. This motor has already been ran and broken in. If it was sitting on an engine stand, I would use the lube that came in the box. Um, it says you could just dip it in oil. I don't know if I'll be starting the car today, so I'll probably just use assembly lube since it's a, a higher viscosity. Um, so that's that on the distributor. Let me show you the motor. Looking at the motor here, uh, I removed our radiator fan to get access because of the supercharger pulley um, to the crankshaft. I've removed our cylinder one spark plug and I've turned the motor over um, and I've also cleared some things out of the way. Turn the motor over, uh, remove this cap, distributor cap and the wires, and I have turned the motor over um, to zero degrees at top dead center. And to know that, you can put your finger over the spark plug hole and verify that it's blowing air out towards you. That means it's on the compression stroke, I believe. Um, and yeah, anyways, long story short, we were at zero degrees top dead center. So we're now ready to pull the distributor out and stab the new one in. Uh, these instructions are a little weird. I have removed the cap off the new distributor. It says, position the rotor contact so it is pointing in the desired direction of the number one spark plug wire. So I'm going to infer that that means 
right now top dead center is pointing here so this would be number one so we're going to line it up um this pretty much lines up with the radiator hose so we're going to shoot for that and then it doesn't really matter it does matter but it doesn't because then you take this cap and you spin the distributor till it locks in place and then there's a little nick right sorry it's hard to do with one hand right here in this cap and that will be our we'll mark that on this with a sharpie and that will be our new number one um spark bulb wire and then we will install the wires according to that that being said i've installed the gasket that comes in here i have uh we're going to lube this up right now and then we're going to drop it in place now these will spin counterclockwise because of the coil or the helix whatever the hell you want to call it of the gear so just take that into account so you may have to go back a tooth um and you'll know what i mean when you actually do to install it but if you go back a tooth so it'll spin and land where you, in your desired location which in our case is where this one's pointing and that way we'll know it'll be on one at top dead center all right guys bear with me here uh we have a permatex ultra slick this is what i'm going to be putting on it because it's a little bit higher viscous than oil so that should help sound the time in if you've compressed there now would be the time to blow it right in your distributor valley there before you pull the old one got a rag here um hopefully you guys can see me in this frame i've got a rag here we pull the old one out because it should be a little oily so let's do that as you pull this one out you can kind of see where the top points and that's where it may help you determine where you need to go so here we go this one's actually a lot heavier so this distributor are ready to run that we're pulling out very similar just isn't doesn't have the chip that this new one has so we'll put this aside Take this one. Yeah, you can kind of see this one's got a whole circuit board in there. We will throw some lube on it. Okay, had to mess with it a little bit, but we've got it where we want, so I'll show you that now. All right, so we can see I have the thing lined up as best I can. I was messing with it for a little bit of jumping teeth. Um, so now we're gonna take our clear cap on it, right here, and we'll spin it till everything lines up. So this will set it like that. Now we will rotate, which is hard to do this with one hand, the distributor. like so and that is good and now we'll mark it here and that will be our number one spark plug so i'm gonna throw the camera down and uh before i mark this we're going to tighten this down right now while it still has the clear plastic cap on it that way we know nothing moves so we'll grab our distributor um i'm gonna do this when i put the camera down distributor wrench i left right there i didn't use one of those for the longest time and once i bought one it they're the world difference I mean, the tool's been around for a year, so it makes complete sense. So we're going to get that tightened while the cap's still on it, then we're going to mark it. Okay, uh, not that this is a big step, but we have our Sharpie marked here. So this is our cylinder one. And then it'll be one, three, seven, two, six, five, four, eight. And uh, I don't have that memorized. I just wrote it on the hood. But that's how it's going to go. Um, pretty simple, guys, so far. And, uh, yeah, I'll keep you updated as we keep going on. All right, guys, there you have it. There's the motor side of this install. Um, all our spark plug wires are in. And then you can see we got our distributor plugged in back here. I am going to, off camera, tuck, clean all this up. Uh, the core wi coil wires just here. It fits. Everything works. I just I want to clean all these wires up, redo the spark plug wire uh, connectors because they're all at different points now. And, yeah, that side of it's done. And now we'll take care of the inside on the Holly sniper right, guys, screen. Guys, now we're in the scar, working on our sniper screen, um, touch screen to set it up. So to do so, we're gonna hit tuning. Oh, sheesh. Tuning, system. 
ignition setup, and then we're gonna hit ignition type. As you can see, I've already switched mine to HyperSpark, but you would wanna do that and then select HyperSpark distributor, and then you would cycle the key on and off to save the settings. Um, and then the next step, according to this, the instructions, we need to um, make sure to set our reference angle to 57.5, and 100 microseconds or yeah so we have 100 microseconds and we already have 57.5 so we're good to go from here so i believe the next step is we will fire up the car and um make sure the timing matches what the computer says all right guys so car runs um i had a little issue which was i just completely overlooked this and spent about two hours diagnosing it stupid issue i put the fire in order of the on the rotor the spark plug wires, I put them clockwise instead of counterclockwise, starting at cylinder one, three, whatever, and so and so. I did them all backwards. Couldn't get this to run, couldn't figure it out. Made a couple phone calls to my brother, and he said, oh, make sure your final order's correct. And I'm like, yeah, it's correct. And sure enough, it was just completely in the wrong order. So, car's fired up, I got that all set. Now, um, we're going to set our static timing on the handheld to 15 degrees, and then verify up here with the timing light. And then um, we'll make changes in the computer software to our inductive delay if it's advanced or retarded on that 15 degrees. And then once that's all set, we'll, I believe we'll unlock our static timing and that way the computer can control it. But we're just setting it, locking our static timing so that we can set our timing on the motor and on the our mounts balancer, if that makes any sense. So let's see. a long video i'm sure um but we did everything from installing the distributor into the motor we have that locked into place i did have to adjust it when i was um to get it on the 15 degrees but that's all set 15 degrees was locked with static timing which i've now cleared in the computer so this is all in time everything's good um now i just need to install my radiator fan back in there which i waited to do that because with the radiator fan i cannot access the crank pulley uh car runs eventually i'll drive it um I have a couple other issues with the blow-off valve or whatever that I got to handle. Adjust that. Um, but yeah, that's how you put a Holly Hyper Smart, Holly Hyper Spark distributor in the car. Like I said in this video, we went the cheap route where we didn't use Hyper Spark ignition. We just wired it straight to the coil, um, our factory coil, which mine's been replaced with an Excel. But same concept there. Hopefully this helped. Um, anyone who's doing the job, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns please drop them below, let me know. And if you haven't, please like, comment, and subscribe.